Hey, so welcome to 3D Printing Your Studios, of course, proudly powered by PCB Way. Use the code 3DPN in the description to get 8% off. 8%, it's quite a deal. This is Alex. Hey, Alex. What's up? How's it going? This is Alex, my good friend, someone we've worked together with. This is the first time on the show. Yes, and first time in the new studio. Absolutely no shortage of 3D printers. Which is kind of funny because he 3D prints out of his kitchen. I have a bunch of Ender 3s that are currently falling apart. Well, and actually that's part of the reason why we know each other. We worked together on a project where I printed a bunch of cases for something, and then he used those in a class where he taught hacking. Yes, so I'm currently running two businesses also out of my kitchen. One of them is DevKitty, that's where I make cat-themed electronics, and that's actually this little logo that I have here. Oh, right there, yeah. Oh, and then the other one is Lind Labs. You guys might be familiar with some of the work that I've done on Hack5. I also create some videos elsewhere where I teach cybersecurity and hacking. I will put links to all of those in the description because it's, it's amazing how DIY tech maker and hacking, pen testing, security stuff, like the Venn diagrams intersect there. Absolutely, yeah. That's sort of a gap that I'm trying to fill, which is education in the cybersecurity space. A lot of it is mysterious to people, specifically like Wi-Fi hacking, anything wireless related. I'm hoping to demystify that, and that's kind of one of my main goals with DevKitty, which is making like cute electronics that you can use us to like learn about different lessons, like wireless hacking, network security, things like that. It's a lot more concrete than just like watching a YouTube video. I feel like actually building the hardware and getting to use it to learn about something. It's a lot more engaging. I think cute. that's cool, man. That's yeah. cool. Plus, plus people would get to keep the hardware that they yeah, exactly. on, right? I love DevKitty. I love the idea of it. And I'm, and that little logo there up front. I mean, you're right. in the land of 3D printers. Do, right. you, do you have that? Can we print that? I have an SVG file. I feel like we would be able to turn that into something. Oh, this is actually an excellent time for me to show you how to take an SVG and without using any CAD software at all, creating a 3D file for printing. Mm. That sounds cool. Let's do it. You want to learn how? Yeah, show me. Find the way! Awesome. So with this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can create a 3D model just from within the slicer. And now it's, I mean, it, it's something custom. Something custom, it's really cool. So we're gonna start out with here is we're in Perusia Slicer. I'm gonna hit the right mouse button. I'm gonna add a shape. It's gonna be a cylinder. It puts it down there. Now on the lower right, I can just put in numbers rather than having to drag things with my mouse or my touchpad. So position for X and Y, I want 180 and I want 180. And that's because we're gonna be using the Prusa XL, which is 360 by 360. So if you divide that by two, that's where that math comes in handy. We get 180 by 180. For size, what I'm gonna do is undo the lock. Let's see, there we go, undo the lock. That is undone. And for size on, uh, the, let's see, the width, I'm gonna go 350. 350, uh, so it's pretty big. And then the height, I'm gonna go 10, 10 millimeters. That's really easy to do. So far, so good, right? What I want you to pay attention to though, is in the right-hand side where it says five for position. That five is the center of the Z height. Z is 10, so halfway through is five, and it's giving you center Z as the height. And we just have to remember that because what we're going to do is add a negative volume and it's gonna be a cylinder. So this cylinder, we want it to be centered at 180 and 180, center of the build plate. And as far as the Z goes, let's not worry about that right now. The size, what we're gonna do, the previous one was 350 by 350. We want a 10 millimeter border on this model. So what we can do is take 10 from either side and we've got 330 by 330. Now the height of this, I want it to be five millimeters tall. That's what I want it to be. Now that we have a negative volume, this is going to take material away from that original one. But the idea being, we're gonna have a 10 millimeter tall big circle, and we're gonna take five millimeters off the top, but with a smaller circle to leave a border. So to do that, we've got it five tall, but remember for these, if we have it at 2.5, then that's going to be on the build plate. And we need to make it five millimeters above the build plate. So what we're gonna do, let's take that 2.5 and add five. So we're gonna get 7.5. And 7.5 is gonna put that shape right at the top. 
And because we've centered it at 180 and 180, it's going to be within this giant circle. Okay, there's our shape. There's our shape. Now, don't worry about this. What we're going to do is go to File, Export, and we're going to export as an STL or an OBJ. So I'm going to call this first shape.stl. With that all exported, what we can do is delete this and delete this because we no longer need it. And we can add that STL in. And look at that. There it is. That is the shape. So it is five millimeters tall. And we have a 10 millimeter wide border that is five millimeters off the, the thing. So there we go. Now what we can do, hit that right mouse button, add a part and an SVG. It's awfully small and it's hard to see. So what we can do is increase the size and you start to see it. Okay, and we want the depth. So see, there it is. We want it to be lower. And so we can, there we go. So now this is going to be the same height as the border, as the border. And so now what we want to do is make it really big, really, really big. How about uh, 300? Let's see, 300. Too big, 240? There we go. Maybe a little bit smaller. <laughs> 230? That could work. That could work. And now we have our position and coordinate system on the right-hand side. So on X, we want it centered. But on Y, I think what we're going to do is move it up just a little bit to center it within the view. And we know it is 5. So if we go to that, that SVG there, got to remember which button. There we go. Edit SVG. So we've got operations here. We've got join, cut, or modify it. We're going to join it, which means it's going to create this SVG as geometry that will join to whatever it's touching. And it's going to be the bottom. There it is. You can't really see it, but now we're going to paint it. So first of all, I'm going to hit the right mouse button, change extruder, and I'm going to go white. It just makes it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to click this, hit the paint. So with this, I've got my first color as black and my second color as white on the extruder four, and I'm choosing smart fill. And so I'm going to click this, that, 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 and the top. And we've almost got our image. I mean, it's been that quick. I'm going to click the side. I want the back to be black as well. Now I want this inner part of the circle to also be black. And if I select that just like that, and it looks like it's black all the way around. That's it. That's it. We've just created ourselves geometry, an actual model within the slicer here. And how cool is that? If you have an SVG, something that's very just, it's just lines. It's just lines. It's computed lines. And you take that and you use the shape generator plus the SVG and you create yourself, in this case, a Dev Kitty logo. That's really cool. Well, I'm going to send it to the printer and really hope Alex is happy with this. I think it's done. I, I sent it to the printer. It printed everything out. Do you want to see it? Let's do it. All right, cool. Hold on, hold on. Let me grab camera. It's over there. Oh my God, it looks beautiful. This is humongous. So next week, I'm actually going to be presenting at the LA Maker Fair. So this is probably going to be the centerpiece at my booth. Dude, look at that. What do you think? It's fabulous. I love the two-tone. This is super awesome. So we painted it black and white. Yep. And we used black filament. We used a black PLA and a white PLA. All within Prusa Slicer. All within Prusa Slicer. That's right. Oh, dude, how epic is that? This was an amazing collaboration. Not only did I get to finally do something with Alex, we got to show you a way that you can do something within a slicer and it requires no CAD work whatsoever. You just have to use a little bit of numbers, right? Yeah, All right. a little bit of math. And, and <laughs> let, me, let me see that for just a second. This yeah. is, wow, this is amazing. Oh, I can't believe this. This is, this is epic. And it doesn't even have to be on a large 3D printer for you to do it. You could right. do this on your Ender 3 in your kitchen. <laughs> With a little bit of modification. I wouldn't be able to do the two colors. We could actually figure out a way to do like a, a filament swap. This is true, yeah. 
But for now, this was easy because we had two extruders and it was able to do it really, really easily. Well, with this out of the way, Alex, where can people go to find out more about you and what you do? Check out my website, Alex Lind, and you can check out this at devkitty.io. I'll put some links down in the description, right? Yep. Sweet. Yep. Well, you know, I know you're flying out and I hope you make it. And I hope you guys made it this far because if you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and hack all the things. Hack the planet. Hack the planet! There we go. And as always, high five. Yes, yep. nailed it. <laughs>